Hey guys, John here. Today we're going to be talking about making shepherd tones within pigments, and that's basically that tone that never really seems like it gets somewhere. It's always rising in pitch or falling in pitch, but you never really hear where it changes, right? So the way to do this is go into the engine one or number two, but select the harmonic engine. So we have something like this, right? Now what we want to do is go to this window over here and select shepherd. Now what we're going to be doing is modulating this phi knob. And the interesting thing to note here is take a look at the at the fundamental and then the next harmonic right over to it. So it fades out just in time for the next harmonic to then become the fundamental. So this is why we need to modulate this in a very particular way so it doesn't necessarily sound like there's a change. So we can increase all the way to the top at one, and this is where a function will come in handy for this. So grab function number one and then drag and drop this all the way to phi, and then for the amount, drag all the way to one. We're gonna get something like that. Now this is moving a little bit too fast and we can hear the changes, right? What we need to do is slow this down a little bit. So with this, it always sounds like it's ascending in pitch, but it never really gets anywhere. An easy way to change the direction, we grab this little note here and then we turn this to the right all the way here so we have an upward saw, which is going to be doing the opposite. Now what we can do is also go into the effects here and thankfully with the new version of pigments, we have access to the super unison because all the other engines have unison except the harmonic one. So that's why the super unison can come in handy. So we have something now like this. Now, for whatever reason, if you see this upward saw here and it's kind of sounding and it seems weird to you because it's descending in pitch and this is rising, all you have to do is go over to the harmonic engine, go back to this phi, turn this down, and then invert the amount to one. That doesn't personally bother me, but I could see how that could bother someone. So just in case it does, that's how you would change that. And then to make it descend. You can always mess with the tension, but I wouldn't really suggest it because you'll have something like this. You'll really start to hear that slope. So that's why it's always nice to have this one at a very linear value. We can also double up on two harmonic engines and do the same thing. So let's go over here to the shepherd, drag this all the way down, use the same function on, a, on the same phi, increases all the way to one, and maybe drop this down an octave or something like that. Get something kind of creepy like that, right? You can make some very dissonant sounds with just moving a couple knobs, maybe this frequency into modulation, or checking out some of these shapes here. And then we can go into the effects and kind of maybe spice it up a little bit. So we could really hold that all day and it's gonna always kind of sound like it's descending in pitch and it's very easy control on this function. And then you can also change the speed if you'd like to hear within our sync or you can go for Hertz if you want something a little bit more exact or not synced. And then for this example, let's say you want to play different notes and always have this effect going. 
but it's re-triggering this, uh, this function every single time. And if you don't want to have that, then you can always click this button over here so it's gonna loop and it doesn't restart. Yeah, so you can make some really nasty stuff doing that with this function. Really just one function and one knob to modulate and some cool effects. So I thought I'd share that with you because it's a very cool effect to make. Maybe if you want to make a texture or something kind of cool. So hopefully you learned something and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.